Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday Night Luke Live Online. I'm Father James DeLucio. I'm here in my room at the Rectory of the Paulist Fathers here in New York City. Tonight's pericope is Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14, a very popular and recognizable parable of Jesus. Jesus then told this parable to all who were convinced of their own righteousness, but despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, the other was a tax collector. Now the Pharisee took up his place, raised his eyes to heaven, and said this prayer, to himself. I thank you, God, that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and pay tithes on my whole income. And the tax collector stood off at a distance and did not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, but the former did not. Whoever wishes to exalt himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. So who doesn't recognize this parable? But do we recognize that it's a parallel parable? And I don't often mention this, but Luke often parallels two events. One that will focus on a woman and another will focus on a man. There's a tremendous balance in Luke. Unlike any of the other Gospels, Jesus observes the behavior of men and women and women and men, and it's very powerful. The parallel here goes back to Luke chapter, chapter 7, when Jesus is at the house of a Pharisee dining there, and the penitent woman, who's despised by so many in the town, comes weeping, thankful for God's forgiveness, and washes Jesus' feet with her tears and dries them with her hair. Here again we have a Pharisee. This time we have another despised person, in this case a male, the tax collector, and he already is like the woman penitent. He's penitent. Now she has the advantage of recognizing that she's forgiven and that's why she weeps in grat gratitude. Here, though, we see a man perhaps in a more fitting position for most of us men who are a bit more power hungry and more about prestige um, as in a rule is a rule um, so uh, but he's in the midst of doing what he's supposed to do now there's many wonderful commentaries here the one the newest one came from the Paulist commentary biblical commentary I quote it from time to time it's it's very new it's only like two years old so we got some of the latest scholarship on it. This one tells us that twice a day, the temple in Jerusalem offered uh, sacrifices of atonement of people for li literally for sorrow, for penitence. And so both of these men are there exactly at that time as they would be if they were really, truly um, pious Jews. And so they're part of a liturgy. They're part of something that's not just the two of them there. There's a whole there's a whole crowd saying various prayers. And so that they're um speaking aloud, and perhaps others are, but it sounds like our seems like our Pharisee is speaking a little extra loud. He wants everybody to know. Uh, and he is doing some unusual things, as I often say in my missions and get a laugh. You know, well, look, this guy's every pastor's dream. He tithes on his whole income. <laughs> and so, uh, which is also unusual according to the commentaries, because tithing was usually on specific parts of one's income, not, income, not one's entire income. So he, this guy is extraordinary. It's pretty good. But he's also 
um, a little too arrogant about about everything, which of course is never a good position to be in between God, ourselves, and with others. The tax collector, of course, recognizes that he's wrong. He knows how much he needs God's mercy, and that again is what we're really always supposed to be conscious of. Now, I recently got over a terrible, terrible several days of a virus and i'll tell you i prayed the far the uh, tax collector's prayer lord jesus have mercy on me and it's true that when we're sick we're so much more dependent on our sense that god is with us that we need god um that we ha I, we are so vulnerable but so is everybody else on the earth it's our common humanity how often do i have to keep reminding myself this if we really want a spiritual path we're constantly needing to remind ourselves that we're different and unique in a special way everybody you know human being no human beings the same yet we're so much more in common with everybody so um that kind of humility is something that we have to keep with us every day especially when we're healthy which is gratitude and that we so we don't keep focusing on our regrets of the past. Who doesn't have these? Who hasn't done wrong things? I mean, it's funny as we get older, we think of the bad things we did as a child. I mean, I know I do. I can't stand it. I have to go, Lord Jesus, have pity on me. Let me live today. Let me live in the moment. So this is very powerful and important parable. Uh, it's a, one of the best open doors and freedom to God, the freedom of God's children to be sorry for our sins and to know that we are given the forgiveness so that we can change so that in a sense we can be like that pharisee except not so arrogant about it now the uh, jewish scholar G amy jill levine that's exactly what she writes in her commentary because she she's a jewish scholar who has made a study of the new testament and she says look that that Pharisee's pretty good, and when Jesus is saying that the uh, the tax the, the tax collector is justified, it means he's brought up in good status, in good way, that just the way um, the Pharisee is. So that's one level. But again, even with that, and thank you, Amy Jillivine, <laughs> but we still have to insist that the e essence of the, the piece is let's all be humble please let's all keep recognizing our our devote our dependence upon god and when we, can we do it when we're truly healthy every every living day so that's what i have to share with you thank you so much for joining me i'm glad that my camera kept going sometimes it doesn't keeps me humble i hope you all have a very good week god bless you now Good night.